This is part 29 of AngularCRUD tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss the significance of NG model group directive. Along the way, we'll discuss another way of implementing confirmed password field validation. In our previous two videos, we discussed one way to implement confirmed password field validation. There is another way as well, so let's look at that in this video. In our previous video, we have included this NG model group directive to group our password field and confirm password fields. At the moment, we are using our custom validator, that is this confirm equal validator, as a directive on this confirm password field right here. Now what we want to be able to do is use this directive on this group right here, which contains our password field and confirm password field. So let's go ahead and include our directive right here. Since we have specified the directive on the group, we don't have to again include it on the confirm password field. So let's go ahead and remove that from there. The benefit of grouping our form controls using this ng model group directive is that whenever the form controls within the group changes, our custom validation is automatically triggered. Because notice, we are now using our custom directive on this group and not on the individual form controls. So this means whenever the password field or confirm password field value changes, our custom validation is automatically triggered. So we don't have to explicitly trigger a controls validation using this update value and validity function. So we can go ahead and remove this event binding from here. Now notice our custom validation directive. Since it is applied on this group, this group is passed as a parameter to the validate function within our custom validator class. So to make this parameter name more meaningful, I'm going to change the name of the parameter from control to password group because what we are passing here is essentially our password group which contains both our password field and confirm password field. So let's use this parameter to get the password field and confirm password fields. So we use the group name dot get and then we specify the name of our password field and the name of our password field is password as you can see right here. So let's use this name and get a reference to the password field. Let's name this constant password field. Similarly, let's also retrieve our confirm password field. Let's name the constant confirm password field. The name of our confirm password field is confirm password. So all that is left now is to check whether if our password field and confirm password field is true the and if our password field value is not equal to confirm password field value then we want to return this object indicating that the validation has failed. Otherwise, we return null indicating validation has succeeded. At the moment, we are not using this input property anymore. So let's delete that. And let's also delete the input type from here. Now, the very important point to keep in mind is this. Notice we are passing the password group as a parameter to the validate method. And when the validation fails, meaning when the password field and the confirm password fields don't match, we are returning this object with the key not equal. So when there is a validation error, Angular is going to attach this key to the password group and not to the individual form controls. That is not to the password field and confirm password fields. This means within our view template, we should be checking this key not equal on the errors collection of the password group and not the password field and confirm password fields. So for us to be able to do that, let's go ahead and create a template reference variable for this ng model group. So let's name our template reference variable password group and to create this template reference variable, we need this ng model group right here. Now, instead of using the confirm password field here and here, we use the password group and then check its errors collection for this key not equal. And we no longer need this condition. So let's get rid of that. 
Finally, we need to do a similar change on the confirm password field. So let's copy this and then make that change on the confirm password field. So instead of checking for the not equal key on the errors collection of the confirm password field, we check for that key on the password group instead. Notice when the password and confirm password don't match, we get the validation error as expected and when they match, the validation error disappears. So, we use this ng model group directive to create a subgroup within a form. This is useful to validate a subgroup of elements on the form. In our case, we have used this ng model group directive to validate if password field and confirm password fields are equal. This directive is also useful to group properties of the form model into a nested object. The name of the ng group directive will become the key for the nested object in the form model. So if we take a look at our employee form, notice these two properties password and confirm password. They are grouped into a nested object and the key for this nested object is the name that we have given to our ng model group directive which is password group. Finally, this ng model group directive can only be used as a child of ng form directive. So if we take a look at our view template, notice at the top right here we have this ng form directive which creates the root form group. And then we have our ng model group directive nested as a child and this ng model group directive creates a subgroup within the root form group. On our employee form, we don't need this password field and confirm password fields. I only included them to demonstrate cross field validation. So let's go ahead and delete this ng model group div. Notice now on our employee form, we don't have the password fields anymore. That's it in this video. Thank you for watching and have a great day.